welcome. You're listening to A Sister's Love. It's time to talk about mental health and wellness with your host, Sharon Bryant. We'll be exploring different topics related to mental health and breaking down the stigma around it. If you're looking for empowerment and inspiration on your journey to mental wellness, you're in the right place. Welcome, welcome, and welcome back to our second episode of A Sister's Love Podcast. Coming from my brand, God's Best Friend, I am your host, Sharon Bryant. Since our last encounter, so many great things have happened, and I definitely want to share them with you. I want to give you some history on how a Sisters Love podcast came into existence. Myself and my supervisor had the opportunity to represent our company in Miami, Florida, April of 2022. And it was a symposium of women in recovery. And the attendants were 500 women from every walk of life. And we had the opportunity to be a part of different topics, subjects, conferences. It it was such a delight. And while I was sitting amongst all these women, when I got to hear their stories, everyone had a story. And as I was watching, I seen a lot of, of my sisters of color, they was representing. They were the presenters. The hostess, mistress of ceremony, I was so impressed. I was very impressed with them. But as I combed the audience, I seen more of my Caucasian sister and less of women of color. And I was wondering why, why was that? Why, why was it less of us and more of them? And so as the different ones presented their topic, they asked anyone, do they have a question? And of course I did. So I stood up and I introduced myself and I told them, you know, I suffered with depression and anxiety and went into my story. And I said to them, you know, I mean, no disrespect, no shades to anyone, but I noticed that this role, that's the attendance of 500 women, I noticed it's more Caucasian women than it is women of color. And so I asked, why is that? And so they said that was a good question. And so the different ones decided they wanted to answer. And the answer that I got wasn't satisfying to me. Now, they did mention that there is a stigma on women of color, you know, ways they don't want people to know that they're having issues or problems or whatever they're going through, the lack of resources in their geographic area. Some did not have insurance, whatever the issues was that would cause women of color not to even attend bothered me. And so while I was sitting right there and that supposedly as I was talking to them, I told them I was going to break that barrier. What I'm not going to do is allow my sisters to be left out. I noticed that they were getting the help that they needed. And my sisters need help as well. They might not say anything, but uh, me being in this sphere, I am a peer recovery support specialist. And me being around this, I do see more of my Caucasian brothers and sisters than I do the women of color. And so it's a reason behind that, but I'm not going to get into that. And so I said to myself at that moment, I told those women, I will break that barrier. And when I come back to Maryland, I was going to start my own chapter. Well, they gave standard ovation and the different ones came over to me and, you know, they gave me their cards and, you know, they were so happy to hear me talk about that. I was speaking about mental health in the church, how it's a taboo. They don't want to talk about it. Why? Why haven't y'all penetrated the church? Blah, 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 blah. And so... Various women came to me and was very proud of me speaking out, um, even invited me to different 
stage events or different conferences that were coming up. And so that let me know that I was on to something. And so when I got back, I said, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to start something where Black women, women of color, can tell their story, feel comfortable in a safe place, and that we all can share our stories and not be judged. And so I did that. Once I landed in Maryland from Philadelphia in April, May of 2022, I started the first chapter of a woman's gathering. That, that chapter, May, was a cruise. One of our sisters never went on a cruise and she wanted to do that for her birthday. So that was the first launching of a sister's gathering. So we took that particular sister on a cruise and we had an awesome, amazing time. And from that, I decided that I would do this once a month so that we as sisters can come together and just share the things that are going on with us and that we may heal each other through love, support, and just listening to one another. In this gathering, there is no titles here. You are a sister. I say titles are left at the door, and I mean just that. So when you attend this gathering, I don't care who you are. You can be a pastor. You can be an administrator. You can be the president of the United States. In this gathering, you are considered a sister. So when you come, you come as you are. Not your titles, uh, not your position, but you come as you are. Because here... We will discuss things that we will not discuss with a psychiatrist, with a doctor, with the, the lawyers, with the pastors. We're not going to discuss that with them, but we're able to do it here. And because of a sister's gathering, you can be an older sister, you can be a younger sister, but what we're going to do for the ones that are older and why does she share with the, the younger sisters? And the younger sister will share with the older sister. In this gather, we are equal. There, there's no judgment. There's no titles. We are healing each other through our testimony. That's basically what it is. And it has been a powerful event, an enlightening, just amazing testimonies that's coming, coming out of the women's gathering. And so I'll, I'm going to speak on August the 21st. We just had the August event. And each month I try to do a different setting, a different topic that we all may expound on and talk about. And I would like a different setting because I think your atmosphere determines, your, your atmosphere, your setting, it just determines the vibe in your room, in your, you know, in your place of being. And so I want to say, this gathering was so special because thus far we have had them outside and I found out it was going to rain on, on August the 21st, 2022. So this gathering was going to be at a park, beautiful park, but we had no covering. And so at the last moment, I had to find something. I decided not to cancel. I was not going to do it. I don't care if it rained or not. I was not going to cancel this event. These events are so important to women that we come together and just speak on the things uh, that are bothering us or that they want to share, that they want to testify. It's so important that we do that. So I decided I was not going to cancel whether it rained or not. And so I had to look for a venue that could hold us at last moment so we could continue. And we found it. And I bless God for that. Thanks to my niece, who is one of my core, she spoke on this beautiful out, outdoor gathering um, off of Tucker Road in Temple Hills, Maryland, or Fort Washington, Maryland. And so we went there, and it was, if when I say that was the ram in the bush, that was the ram in the bush. No one had it. No one reserved it. We was told we can do it. Don't worry about anything. The atmosphere was beautiful. The setting was divine. We had an awning, the covering. If it rained, it would have covered us. And when I tell you 
When you love God, let nothing separate you from doing the work of the Lord. And I refuse to cancel this event. And so we did have our gathering and we pray that God hold back the rain because we knew this was significant and we wanted to get it out. And God did just that. He held back the rain. It did not rain to eight o'clock. Our gathering was from four to seven and such a powerful, powerful, powerful event. And the testimonies that came out of that, it, 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 it allows me to, it tells me that I'm on the right path, that I must continue this, that this is something that must go forth every month until the Lord changes it to something else. And so I'm going to give you a couple of testimonies that came out of that as we were talking. One of the sisters was speaking on, she parked her car in, and she parked her car in an area that she should not. She was just going to jump out the car and just go into the place, get her food, and come back. Well, while she did that, the tow truck came and was putting the car on the left. And so she was like, oh, my God, he's taking my car. So she went back out there, and she was telling him, I always park here. I'm just getting my food. You know, can you please not take my car? And he said, well, if you give me $50, then I won't take your car. Of course, she was upset because she was like, $50? She was like, I don't have that, but I cannot let them take my father's car. So she ended up giving the gentleman $50, and he took the car off the lift, and he gave it back to her. And so while she was telling the story, she was upset because she was like, I put out so much money and to give him that $50. She said it, it really you know, broke her. But then when she turned around and other sister made her see it in a different way, Oh my God, it was, it was such a blessing. So instead of being upset that she had to give up the 50, we in turn felt like the person that put the car on the lift must've needed that money. And maybe that was his prayer to God that he need to make that kind of money that day. And so Monique so happened to be the person that he got the money from. And so her being upset, we talked about it. She was saying the very next day, the very next day, she had got a, from her mortgage company of something that, of a house she had like 15, 20 years ago. They're just getting to her, apologize for not getting it to her sooner. But they found her and they sent her a check. And so when she, she said she normally would throw that away, but this time she decided not to. And when she went to go open up this check, she, when she went to go open up this envelope, she had a check in there that was triple times, quadruple times the amount that she put out for the $50 on her left. What's the more to that story? We don't know who God wants us to bless. It might have been, it was, I can't think of the word. It, 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 it didn't make her feel good that she had to put that out. But in the end, what happened was God blessed her double. And so we was just, we was just happy because, you know, something that, something that was something to us that was, was bad in a sense turned around and ended up being towards your good. She ended up blessing that gentleman and God turned around and blessed her. These are the things that comes out of this gathering. So we clap hands and we love it up on it. It was like, wow. And that's the things, these are the, the things that comes out of this gathering. We had another sister that was there, very shy. And she was speaking how these gathering has really helped her. She would say she's a one-on-one -on -one person and she don't speak out into a crowd of women. She'll talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. But she was saying just because she see the sisters telling their stories and they're not afraid to do it and, and the atmosphere is comfortable and she feels safe. She told us this has blessed her. It allowed her to talk about that which was bothering her. And so when we listen to her talk and we can see the light around her, you can tell she's being healed. And the things that she's sharing, you know, she's getting love. She's not being judged. We loving up on her. We supporting her. And there was something, there was a need in the house. And God allowed us to pick up on that need. And we in turn as the sisters turned around and blessed 
one of the other sisters. All of us bless the other sister. These are the things that comes out of a sister's gathering. We are about empowerment. We are about love. We are about support. And this is the purpose of this podcast. It's for women to come and share their stories. You don't have to. You can come and listen. But it's about us hearing each other. Women healing women in a gathering of sisters. And that is the reason why I have brought this together. And since then, we also had another testimony. I am in another group of my church, the missionaries. They go out once a month on the street and we deal with the homeless. And so every month we take, we take them food, clothing if we have to, literature, we pray, we have pictures, all that stuff. We, we do this once a month. And there's one particular lady that always come by and see us. And so this is our third time going out since the COVID. This is our third time. So the same day that I had a sister gathering is the same day we went out on the street to deal with the homeless. And so once we finished that, we left that. And then we, four o'clock, we ran to the event to have the sister gather. But this particular young lady, came up to us and she was saying to our church that she appreciate us and that she loved that we come out and she loved how we give the attention and how we feed them and how we pray for them. And she was saying, I see y'all as a genuine church. She says, nothing fake about you. And that's powerful within itself because our heart means right. We're not going out there for, for show or fashion. We're going out there to make sure we meet the needs of people that need help. And so this particular young lady, we gave her our number and we told her if ever she needs to talk, she can. And she called us Saturday, just past. She called us August the 26th. And so while we're here, we was at my nephew's wedding. I'll tell you about that. And she called and no, she left us a message. She texted us and told us, you know, she's thinking about us and thank you for seeing about her and coming by and checking on them and, and making sure that they okay. And so all of the, all of us that's in this gathering had her in our heart and we was talking how we wanted to do things for her. And so when she texted us, it, 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 we were so elated. We was like, oh my gosh, she reached out. And so I said to the sisters, I was like, we have to do something for her. My heart, my purpose, and I hope that God will bless me one day that I want to be able to house women that are homeless, have addiction, whatever your issues are. I want to be able to house them where they can come, even if it's for a day, a week, a month, a year, that they can get their self together. And, and to allow them to feel good about themselves as a woman. And, and I'm talking about the personal need, taking them out, shopping, just making them feel good for that day. That is my desire. And so I shared that with my sisters. And so I sent her a text back and say, we want to take you out. And we want to know when you are available, when can we do that for you? And she sent the text back and said, anytime y'all want to. So we, the Sisters Gathering, the Sisters Love Gathering, is going to take our friend out Sunday, September the 4th. We're going to take her out for the day. And whatever her needs are, we're going to do. We're going to answer those needs on that day. These are the things that we're doing from a Sisters Gathering. We have a heart of God, and we want to see our sisters heal from, from their head to their toe. Whatever the need is, we want to make sure we're there for them. Something else happened when I heard my niece speaking on how God blessed her. I, in turn, I said, God, I have given. I don't have a problem giving to God's people because that's just who I am. I don't have a problem giving out to whoever is in need because that is what I do. And so I said to the Lord, but I'm depleted. You know, I'm out. I, I, I don't have no more resources. And, uh, and I left it there. I said, but, you know, whatever I have to do to help your people, that's what I'm going to do. And so I went to go get my grandbaby's hair done for school. And all of a sudden, I got a call. And the person that called me 
I did a job for them in June of 2022. So it was June 23rd, 2022. And that same person reached out to me on a Tuesday. And when I tell you I was depleted of money, didn't have nothing, no resources, it's like I've given out. This person called me and told me that the deposit that I've given them on 623 has still has been sitting in the bank or the or the cash bank for two months. And they wanted to know why it wasn't cash. And so when she called me, she asked me, she, you know, she says three things I want to say. Do you need money? And I'm like, why would somebody call and ask me that? And I said, of course I do. She said, well, the same amount of money that you sent to us, we want to send it back to you because that was a part of your contract. And I'm looking at the phone like, what? So the very thing that happened to my niece, God in turn allowed that to happen to me. And I'm like, God, you are so amazing. On a Tuesday, when I was depleted from helping everyone that I could possibly care, God turned around and gave that back to me. And not only did God give back to me the money, she offered me a position. And I'm like, what is going on, Jesus? What are you doing? What am I saying? When you have a heart to do what's right, don't let nothing stop you from doing just that. I didn't let rain. I didn't let sleep. I didn't let the storm. I didn't care what was coming. I was not going to stop this gathering because of it. I had to continue it because it was a need. And those women needed that. And God blessed us mightily. These are the testimonies that are coming forth from a sister's gathering that started from me going to a place in April and launched it in May. And it's still going strong. And the testimonies that I'm getting, the women, you can see you can see this testimony on my website, God's Best Friend. If God lay it on your heart to bless this ministry, you can do that on the website. There is a donate button that you can bless us so that we can bless other people. Again, the website is godsbestfriend.com. I am Sharon Bryant. There's a space where you can leave a testimony. You can leave information if you need to reach me. God's best friend.com. We are on a mission to impact one woman at a time. And if you feel like you want to be a blessing to us, please, please donate to God's best friend.com and you will get to see the testimonies of your donation. We will put them on my website. And the last thing I want to speak about is my nephew, Darren. He got married on August the 26th, 2022, to the most beautiful young lady I've met. Her name is, and I can say this, Lamina. She's now a binum. What fascinated me about this wedding, and I did put it on Facebook, so if you wanted to see it, you can go see it. Lamina is so thoughtful and so compassionate. She blessed this family because she honored my sister. The sister that I spoke to you about, Antoinette Shaw, she's the reason why I do a Sister's Love podcast. The mean and Dara got married. She dedicated, she made a plaque, and she had this chair sitting in front that she dedicated to my sister that touched all our hearts. It was in lieu of, in place of Antoinette Shaw, who is, I hear to see her son get married. But such a beautiful young lady. She did that for our family. And my nephew was so, he was so happy. We were so happy to know that in spirit that Antoinette is here. To know that she done a great job with her son, Darren, to know that her kids are doing well and that her son got married. My sister didn't get to see me marry. She didn't get to see her son marry, but I want her to know she did a fabulous job. 
not only did she dedicate time for internet, she also put it in her reception. She made this beautiful brooch that had my sister and my nephew inside it. And she presented that to her husband before she walked down the aisle. When I tell you this young lady has touched this family in a way we would never forget. For you to recognize our baby sister as you did, you would never know how you inspired us. This wedding was the most beautiful wedding I've seen. And I thank God for the both of them. And uh, she made us happy. She made the world happy. That video has gotten over 300 views since yesterday. And her cake, she had my sister. She, she dedicated things to my sister. She had this beautiful setting where his mother dwell. And, and the people that she lost. And she asked me, would I dance with my nephew in lieu of his mother? And I did. And I want to say, I thank God for her. I thank God for her life. I thank God for who she represented. I thank God for a sister that loved up on us. She didn't see about herself. Though she went through what she went through, she always seen about us. And this podcast will always be dedicated to Antoinette Shaw. And to my sister, your son is doing an amazing job. Ashley is doing well. And we got both of them. And I know you're looking down. And I want to tell y'all about the cardinal bird that I know is Antoinette Shaw that come and visit me every day. Every day, this cardinal, beautiful red bird comes to my back window, peck on the window, just to see how I'm doing. And I know it's Antoinette Shaw. I know it's my sister. And even if it wasn't, I'm making it her. And if it doesn't make me feel so precious on the inside that she's looking over me. I love her for her life. I love her for the woman she was, for the sister she was, for the mother she was. She is, she is the reason why. And as I end this show, I want y'all to know such a beautiful thing has come from this. And it's all because of my sister's love. I thank you all for listening to this podcast is so much more to come, so much more to tell you about. But the last words I will say, please love up on yourself. Know that someone's out there, somebody care, somebody want to see you do well. And that somebody is your sister. And that is me. God loves you. I love you. Stay tuned for our next episode. I thank you. I thank you. And I thank you again. Again, if you want to be a part, a blessing to us, please donate on our website, godsbestfriend.com. And until then, we will see you in the next episode. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on another episode of A Sister's Love. We hope that our discussion was able to provide you with some insight and inspiration. If you ever need someone to talk to, our doors are always open. For support on your journey, visit us online at www.godsbestfriend.com. Until next time, remember, together we are not alone.